along with the figure and explanation is available just uh, go through it okay next let us go with the registers here as i've told you it consists of 15 registers you see here here we have 15 registers the 16 registers which is ranging from r0 to r15 but here we have three special case registers uh, which are which are at the end that is the last three that is r13 r14 and r15 so these are special registers uh, okay uh, the basically r13 is for sp that is the stack pointer r14 is the lr that is the link register r15 is the pc that is the program counter below that we have current program status register that we are going to see in the upcoming videos first let us see the complete registers now the general purpose registers hold either the data or an address they are identified with the letter r okay prefixed to the register number okay for example register 4 is given the label as r4 okay this figure shows the active registers available in user mode which is a protected mode which is normally used in which is normally used when executing the applications okay the processor can operate in seven different modes all the registers are shown in the 32 bits in size so each registers are of are the size 32 bits it can store 32 bits there are up to 18 active registers 16 data registers and two processor status registers that is cpsr and spsr okay the data registers visible to the program are from r0 to uh, r15 the arm processor has three registers assigned to a particular task or special function okay those are r13 14 and 15 register r13 is traditionally used as the stack pointer and stores the head of the stack in the current processor mode okay then r14 is called as the link register the functioning of this link register is uh, uh, the core puts the return address whenever it calls for a subroutine okay whenever there is a subroutine whenever it calls for the subroutine the link register would be getting activated register r15 is for the program counter that is pc it contains the address of the next instruction to be fetched by the processor okay so this is the functioning of the these three stack pointer link register and program counter in the ARM state registers, R0 to R13 are orthogonal, any instruction that you can apply, okay, it's left to you. In addition to the 16 data registers, there are two program status registers, that is one is CPSR and SPSR, okay. CPSR is current program status register and SPSR is saved program status register. So, in total, 16 plus 2, 18 active registers are there in the ARM core data flow, okay. SPSR, in this video, we are going to discuss with the current program status register which is very very important okay that is cpsr in this let us discuss now the arm core uses the cpsr to monitor and control the internal operations okay the which is the inside the core there will be there will be some of the internal operations which are taking place those internal operations are controlled by the cpsr because this cpsr contains some of the status flags and that would be getting updated time to time during the process of execution and the operation. The CPSR is a dedicated 32-bit register. Okay, it is a 32-bit register and resides in the register file. Okay, it is present in the register file. The following figure shows the basic layout of the general generic program status register. Note that shaded parts are reserved for future expansion. Okay, so this is the reserved part where... Uh, if the user is uh, uh, need, uh, if the user wants to use these uh, these bits in uh, in between, it is completely dependent on the user. Okay, so this is the CPSR register, complete 32-bit register, a generic program status register. Okay, if you observe carefully here, the uh, the 31st bit up to the 28th bit are flags. Okay, okay, then this is the status part where the complete data flow will be taking place. This is the extension part. This is the core extension part where the ARM core would be extended to the input signals provided. Then this is the control unit where we have some of the interrupt masks that is I and F. Then we have T. This is the thumb state. Then this is the mode. This is the processor mode. Okay. In this we are having different kinds of modes that we are going to discuss in this video itself. The first four flags are called as the condition flags. Okay. So these conditional flags are very important uh, because uh, based on the condition flags, the outputs would be available in the registers okay there are mainly four condition flags there are n which stands for negative then this is a zero flag this is carry flag and this is overflow flag so each of them in detail we are going to discuss now okay so this diagram you need to remember 
the cpsr is divided into four fields so these four fields are flags status extension and control okay the current designs the extension and status fields are reserved for future use so status and extension fields are reserved for future use the control field contains the processor mode state and interrupt mask bits okay then the flags field consists the conditional flags some arm processor cores have extra bits allocated for example the j bit which can be found in the flags field okay in the flags field one j bit would be there it is only available on jazeled enabled processors which is not uh, for all the processors which execute the 8 bit instruction so that's not required it is highly probable that future designs will assign extra bits for monitoring and control of new features okay now let us focus on these four flags only okay are there in this module after that we have one more concept which is left that is related to the exceptions interrupts and the vector table okay so this concept is very important uh, this is the final concept here let us see what are these exceptions interrupts and the vector table okay so when an exception or the interrupt occurs here the processor sets the pc to a specific memory address and that address is within the special address range and that range is called as vector table okay so when an exception or interrupt occurs during the execution of the program the, the, the arm processor sets the pc to a specific memory address okay as you know that the pc's work is to fetch the address of the next instruction to be executed okay during due to the, this exception or any interrupt happening this uh, sets the pc to a specific memory address okay not usually the next instruction and that address is specified as a special address range and that special address range is called as the vector table okay the entries in the vector table are instructions that branch to specific routines designed to handle a particular exception or interrupt the memory map address that is a uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 up to uh, or eight zeros or in some processors starting at the offset that is FFFF0000 is reserved for the vector table okay it is a set of 32 bit words when an exception or interrupt occurs the processor suspends the normal execution and starts loading the instructions from the exception vector table okay so when an exception or interrupt occurs the processor would be suspending the, that is the normal execution which is happening that would be getting terminated and the next next instruction to be executed would be taken from the vector table okay so this is the vector table here you see here these are the exceptions and interrupts uh, short and uh, short and then we have a uh, address and the high address okay so these are the exceptions or interrupts one is reset okay this so this is one exception okay if you want to reset the program okay here we have short and reset address is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. high address is the same remains the same then we have un undefined instruction that is UNDEF, the address would be starting from 0, 0, 0, 0004, okay? That is, you, since you know that uh, uh, it uh, consists of uh, 4 bytes, 32 bits, so that's why uh, it would be leaving 4, 4 spaces, okay? And then it would be starting. Next address for undefined instruction is 0, 0, 0, 0004, and the next is FFFF0004, that is the high address. Next, for software interrupt, again, after 4 bytes, it is 8. Then for high address, it is uh, FFFF0008. Then we have prefetched a pot. Then uh, it, it would be in hexadecimal, so 9, A, B, C. Then similarly, we have data about reserved interrupt request and fast interrupt request. Okay, so these are this is the complete vector table which is assigned with the special addresses and the special high addresses whenever there is any one of the exception or interrupt occur. Okay, so this was about the vector table, guys. So you see here. Each vector table entry contains a form of branch instruction pointing to the start of the specific routine. Okay. So one by one, you see here the reset vector. The reset vector is the location of the first instruction executed by the processor, processor when the power is applied. This instruction branches to the initialization coding or the boot coding. Next is undefined. The undefined instruction vector is used when the processor cannot decode an instruction. Okay, when the processor is not able to decode any instruction, then this undefined instruction is used. And for that, the specific address location is selected. Next, we have software interrupt vector. It is called when you execute the SWI instruction. The SWI instruction is frequently used as the mechanism to invoke an operating system routine. Okay. Next, we have prefetch abort. It occurs when the processor attempts to fetch an instruction from an address without the correct access permissions. Okay. So that is without any prior permissions taken in the execution time, randomly when you are executing in the in, in any sequence, this prefetch abort vector 
would be occurring okay the actual abort occurs in the decoding stage next we have data abort data abort is similar to that of the prefetch abort but there is one change it is raised when the instruction attempts attempts to access the data memory without the correct access permission okay so it is accessed during the data memory but it doesn't have any correct access permission so that's why this data about a vector would be enabled next we have interrupt request vector it is used by the external hardware to interrupt the normal execution flow of the processor okay if you want to have uh, in purpose if you want to make any interrupts okay so that's why then this vector is used that is interrupt request vector next we have fast interrupt request vector it is same to that of the inter interrupt request but it is reserved for hardware requiring the faster response okay if you want faster response then this uh, fast uh, fast interrupt request vector is to be used okay it is only raised when it is only raised if fiqs are not masked in the cps okay so this was all about the exceptions or interrupt and the vector table